OnlyFans really blew up in 2020, with a lot of people joining the platform, a lot of people criticizing the platform, and a lot of controversy surrounding the platform. Some people claim that creators can make hundreds of thousands of dollars joining OnlyFans, and some say that OnlyFans is a total scam. So what is the truth? In this video, we're gonna do a deep dive into OnlyFans and the good, the bad, and the ugly. But first, make sure you're subscribed, click to the bell, and don't forget to interact with this video to give it a boost in the YouTube algorithm. And well, let's get into it. Before we get into this video, I want to give a quick disclaimer because this whole topic is such a controversial and highly debated topic. This video isn't to recommend that anyone join OnlyFans, nor is it to put down the entire platform and the creators who rely on OnlyFans for income. My intention for this video is to just give a balanced outlook and why OnlyFans might be good and bad so that you can draw your own conclusions. I was also able to interview an OnlyFans creator at the end of this video, and that was a really awesome interview, so I highly recommend sticking around till the end of this video. First, let's talk about what OnlyFans is and how it got started. If you didn't know what OnlyFans is, it's basically a platform for creators to sell original content, most commonly photos and videos, and most commonly of the pornographic variety. The site's tagline is make your influence pay because the intended use for the site is for influencers to monetize their influence. But there have also been successful creators who joined the platform that didn't have a large social media following beforehand, so that's not necessarily a limiting factor or requirement of joining OnlyFans. In 2020, due to the lockdowns, OnlyFans reported a 42% increase in users. There are now more than 660,000 creator accounts and 50 million users worldwide. OnlyFans also reported revenue of 1.2 billion, paying 950 million to creators. So how did OnlyFans get its start and become such a huge company? OnlyFans was launched in 2016 by 33-year-old Timothy Stokely. Stokely came up with the idea of OnlyFans when he learned about the prevalence of adult entertainers selling under-the-table services, think private Snapchat and all of that. Which now, I haven't seen too many private Snapchats floating around or like ads to join my private Snapchat now that OnlyFans is a thing. I think a lot of people found OnlyFans to be a better solution. OnlyFans used to be fully owned by the Stokely family. Yeah, but it's like not just him, but also I guess his father was involved. Imagine starting a business in the adult entertainment industry with your parent. So yeah, OnlyFans used to be fully owned by the Stokely family until American investor Leonid Radvinsky probably said that wrong, acquired 75% of the company, which is a huge percentage of the company. How the platform works is once a user subscribes to a creator, OnlyFans gets 20% of the cut and the creator gets 80%, which I would actually say 20% is a lot considering OnlyFans doesn't really do anything at all to promote the creators or to get them new users. They're kind of just the platform itself and the tools in which the creator can post, have a paywall and have subscribers, but really the creator has to do all of the promotion. They have to get all of the users that they have and they have to do a lot of the work. So to have 20% just automatically taken away just for the platform, I don't know how I feel about that. How do you guys feel? It's interesting. But anyways, that's how OnlyFans got started and what it does, basically a medium for people to sell exclusive content. Though interestingly, according to Vice, one creator noted that most of their regular really just wanted to spend more time with the creator and be able to talk to the creator and connect on a more personal level. The creator shared how regulars who pay for top tier packages actually just want to spend more quality time. It makes sense that during a year of isolation, people are looking for more emotional intimacy. On the user side, it seems like OnlyFans has become an outlet for lonely people who may be struggling with their mental health to be able to connect with 
someone on a deeper level when they're maybe unable to in their personal life. So from its start in 2016 to where OnlyFans is now, how did it exponentially grow into the billion dollar company that it is today? OnlyFans exploded into the mainstream for a few reasons. As I've already said, the pandemic has increased isolation greatly and probably in turn increased feelings of loneliness as people look to connect with others online since they can't do so in person. The pandemic also caused a lot of financial strain for a lot of people, which I'm sure caused a lot more people to join OnlyFans, hoping that it could become a source of income as massive jobs job losses and job uncertainty is occurring. OnlyFans also had a mechanism for built-in viral growth. OF was made for influencers to make money. That was the underlying purpose of the platform. So because of that, famous influencers and even celebrities joined the platform and promoted the platform. Because all of these large influencers were promoting the platform heavily, word about OnlyFans spread and more and more people joined, more users joined, and that's how they were able to grow so quickly. There was also a few huge publicity moments for OnlyFans when mainstream news outlets were reporting on things that were happening within OnlyFans. Like when OnlyFans creators raised a million dollars, a million dollars to donate to charity to help the Australian wildfires. Pretty awesome. During 2020, I also think a huge part of the site blowing up was the talk around how much money you can make on OnlyFans. I know even myself, I've just happened to see a few TikTok videos of people talking about how much money they make on OnlyFans and people DMing me asking me to look into whether or not that's legit. So the whole money-making aspect has enticed a lot of people to join and a lot of people to promote the site. So with all of this talk about people saying how much money they're making on OnlyFans and all of this growth within the company, it begs the question, is OnlyFans legit? Well, we do know that very large creators and influencers and even celebrities have made a lot of money on OnlyFans. OnlyFans model Danny Harwood has made $100,000 a month on OnlyFans. Bella Thorne made over a million dollars in one day on her OnlyFans account, though we'll talk about that and why that was super shady. Ayala Day, which I'm so sorry if I pronounced that name wrong, also earns $100,000 every month, but creators like Ayala are in the top 0.4%. 0.4%, not even in the top 1%, which is just not a realistic number for most people who create an OnlyFans account. According to a study by Thomas Hollins, the top 10% of creators on OnlyFans make 73% of all of the money. Top creators can make around 30,000 to 50,000 per month, and the rest may actually be making just under $100. A lot of people look to OnlyFans as a potential side hustle where they can possibly make a ton of money with little effort, but most people who actually do make a ton of money on OnlyFans treat it like a full-time job. Creators are virtually solo media companies. Not only do creators have to produce and post all of their own content, which means video editing, which means filming, lighting, production, setup, all that, makeup, hair, costumes, which is really time consuming, or it can be. But creators also have to do all of their own marketing, promoting their page, managing their finances, growing their social media accounts, and copywriting. OnlyFans creators also have to monitor and manage their own page. Top creator Monica Holt claims that every day she has to respond to around 40 to 50 messages. And she really has to respond to these messages because if you don't, you could possibly lose that subscriber or just lose that connection. Since OnlyFans is so new, it's also subject to 
a lot of changes. Think YouTube ad apocalypse. So there's a lot of uncertainty and worry that comes with being a creator. That being said, a lot of creators have formed communities to help each other grow. Ayala Day, one of the top creators I mentioned earlier, has said that her and 83 other OnlyFans creators have a telegram group where creators exchange tips and advice on what each one is doing differently that might help them do better. The issue is not every OnlyFans creator actually and genuinely wants to help other creators. One of the worst parts of OnlyFans, in my opinion, is the affiliate program, or more so how the affiliate program is being abused. With the affiliate program, OnlyFans creators are able to make commission if they get other people to sign up as OnlyFans creators. This has resulted in a lot of people going on social media and making false income claims about how much money they're making on OnlyFans and how much money you can make too. I've only been doing this for a month and I've made over $100,000. Sound familiar? Sound like something else we know? The MLM bells are ringing, which of course OnlyFans is not an MLM, but no matter what, making false income claims and false income promises to try and rope people into signing up for sex work is very shady. If you are considering signing up for OnlyFans, definitely click the link in my description box to sign up. That's my referral link. It really helped me out, so thank you so much. I also want to say that I do offer shout outs on my OnlyFans account. If you want information on this, DM me on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, hit me up somewhere and we can chat. If you have not yet signed up for OnlyFans, definitely click the link in my description box to sign up through my referral link. So you can always sign up for OnlyFans by clicking on that link in my description box. If you are making an account for the first time, I will leave my referral link down below for you to join. I'll get into what referral links do later on in the video and I definitely think if you are making an account you should promote your referral link as well um, but yeah mine will be down below if you would like to join click that and it'll take you back to the joining page. A lot of these creators that heavily push and promote their affiliate link don't actually discuss the ramifications of having an OnlyFans account. They don't talk about the realities of the work you have to put in or some of the drawbacks and dangers of having an OnlyFans account or being an adult entertainer in general and really promote only fans in an irresponsible way in my opinion. Don't get me wrong, there are definitely creators who passively and responsibly share their affiliate link and don't make false income claims or false income promises, but overall, there are definitely a lot who do, and that's just not right in my opinion. If you're able to get someone to sign up with your link, you'll make 5% for life of any OnlyFans models you refer. For life, you make 5% of everything that that OnlyFans model is making. And I think a lot of people see that income potential as an easier way to passively make money than to actively build up their own OnlyFans page, which takes a lot more patience, self-promotion, and hard work and dedication. It's much easier to say to others, hey, you can make all this money on OnlyFans, sign up, get people to join, make your money, and then basically piggyback off of their potential success. The thing is, adult entertainment can be an industry with a lot of drawbacks that you have to be prepared for because OnlyFans is talked about so casually, a lot of people don't think about the fact that you can get bullied or harassed for having an OnlyFans page. Your family members can find out about your OnlyFans page. For the rest of your life, your OnlyFans page will be on your record. So potential jobs that are outside of the adult entertainment industry will find out about your OnlyFans page. And that's an aspect that people have a right to know before being pushed or encouraged into joining OnlyFans. So overall, I do think that a lot of the way that the affiliate program has encouraged people to push others into joining OnlyFans has been irresponsible at times. But apart from the affiliate program, what are some of the controversies that have given OnlyFans a bad rap? 
Most controversies surrounding OnlyFans have to do with celebrities and influencers who join the platform. For example, the recent controversy where Gabby DiMartino, a YouTuber and influencer, had people pay for a video on OnlyFans of her as a child and distributed that video of her as a child. A child. Which the legality of that is doesn't look good because, you know, it's kind of distribution of child pornography. But also a lot of people felt scammed from that because of the way that she promoted the video. People thinking that it was 25 year old Gabby on OnlyFans and not her as a child felt scammed by the whole thing. Tana Mojo was also under fire for basically doing a similar thing, basically doing the clickbaiting of OnlyFans, promoting content on OnlyFans that didn't end up being what she had made it appear to be, if you catch my drift. So a lot of her subscribers felt tricked and annoyed. And then of course, there's the controversy surrounding the celebrity who practically invented OnlyFans, Bella Thorne, and who allegedly promised, once again, in a similar fashion, celebrities, influencers, Come on, clickbaiting's cool on YouTube, but it's just downright scammery on OnlyFans. But anyways, she had promised unclothed photos of her for $200. $200! But the actual photos were not what she had promised. So a lot of people felt very, very scammed by this. The problem with all of these influencers joining OnlyFans just to abuse the platform and scam people for money is the fact that it legitimately harms people who are working their booties off, literally and figuratively, to be on OnlyFans to give people legitimate content and who are operating 100% legitimately, not scamming anyone. Because first off, people who have been scammed by these larger influencers start to distrust the platform more. And that makes it harder for other OnlyFans creators to promote their page and get more subscribers. And also, after these controversies, OnlyFans introduced new restrictions that limited the amount creators on the platform can charge and how quickly creators can get paid. So it really messes with other creators' business when celebrities and influencers go on OnlyFans because they see it as this like no rules place where they can do these tricks that they do on other social media platforms, but it just doesn't work with that platform. Aside from the celebrity debacles, other controversies regarding OnlyFans have to do with a lot more serious allegations. A BBC3 documentary alleged that a third of Twitter profiles globally advertising nudes for sale, belong to people who are underage, many of whom use OnlyFans to share their content. And worries of similar situations like these arising on other social media accounts may be the reason why social media in general is censoring a lot of OnlyFan creator accounts, and why TikTok has altogether banned accounts belonging to OnlyFans creators, which I'm sure is extremely frustrating for OnlyFans creators who are of age and who are operating legitimately, since most OnlyFans creators rely on social media to promote their pages. There have also been some concerns about OnlyFans itself and its business and operations and whether or not it's operating legitimately. In July of 2020, Sky News reported that OnlyFans had not paid value-added tax the previous three years. Also, in August 2020, Forensic News reported that the company is facing multiple allegations after content creators and users said they had money stolen from their accounts. So OnlyFans is definitely an imperfect platform and one that is subject to change the more people abuse it. But for this video, I didn't just want to research the platform and provide my take as an outsider because there just may be aspects that I overlook and don't know about, or there may be things that aren't commonly talked about or provided in articles, but are important to know about OnlyFans that only creators and users within the platform would know about. So for that reason, I wanted to actually interview and chat with a OnlyFans creator. And luckily, 
I was able to get in contact with Lana B, an OnlyFans creator, and she was nice enough to do an interview with me and answer all of the questions that I asked, which was really cool and I appreciate that a lot because it gave so much further insight and was even more informative than all my research. I do want to say, please do not comment any hateful or disrespectful comments against my interviewee. Those will be deleted. And now let's jump into the chat with Lana. So hello, Lana. Welcome. Hi. So yeah, before we start, so I don't forget, what are your socials and everything so that people watching the video know where to follow you? Um, I have a TikTok, which is Lana B, which has like five E's. And then I have Instagram, which is Lana B Puppy. I'm Lana B on Reddit. And then I also have a YouTube channel, which is just Lana B. And then of course I have my NSFW sites, but they can find that there if they go to my Instagram or whatever. So what was your journey in finding OnlyFans and kind of, you know, starting on the platform, growing and then getting to where you are now? I've been doing um, adult content work for about three years. I actually started as a stripper, but I didn't like it because I I, so I have, um, I've got autism and I really don't like when people touch me. So I was having a really hard time with the lap dances, <laughs> but then I ended up moving over to live streaming, like Chatterbait and my free cams. And then after a while, I realized I didn't really like the live streaming aspect of porn and I wanted to like more make content, but then I also liked interacting with live streaming. So I kind of balanced it by, I went over to Twitch and then about a year ago, year and a half ago, I started on OnlyFans and I've just been like, just like dedicating all my time to OnlyFans basically. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So how'd you hear about the platform and how have you been able to grow on OnlyFans? So it's been around for quite a while and I heard about it um, from other models, I think on Twitter. And so I kind of used it, like I kind of started it through them and like what they were talking about and everything. I was like, oh, I could try that out. That's actually a really good idea because at the time I would sell videos through a site called Minivids. And they have a subscription option, but the problem with mini vids is they don't really generate a lot of traffic and it's just not a really popular site. So I tried out OnlyFans and I really liked it because I could like set all these prices and do all these things and it worked like Twitter and I, re I really, I really liked it. And then growing my OnlyFans, like a large part of it has just been like growing my social media presence and then yeah. just kind of like being like, oh, by the way, if you like the stuff that I put out, you know, you can support me Smart. through this, you know? Yeah. And I just kind of like, you know, tag that on to everything at the end of stuff or whatever. And then over time, it's, it's, it's been a, it's been a lot of work. It's a lot of work that I put into it, but yeah, it's, it's taken me a while, but I'm getting there. <laughs> yeah. That's really cool though. From what it sounds like it's better to grow off of OnlyFans, like on social media and promote your OnlyFans page that way. Then like, there's not really like a growing system in OnlyFans to promote. No, like, yeah. yeah. They don't really have any, there's, they don't really generate their own traffic either. And that's a, that's a large problem with a lot of um, subscription or selling type sites like Pornhub generates its own traffic like crazy like I can you know they get millions and millions and millions all week um but sites like OnlyFans like a lot of it is behind paywalls so people don't really like hang out and like casually browse OnlyFans unless they're subscribed to people already so it's a lot of it is definitely bringing people in from other sites well, that's good to know and I know you said that your boyfriend also does OnlyFans I, I think traditionally you hear a lot about women on OnlyFans but mm -hmm. that was really interesting to me that you know it's something that like all genders can you know participate in in a platform that you know everyone can can use so my my boyfriend, um, he's like a pretty well-known chatterbait streamer and he's been doing that for quite a while. He's been doing like porn and um, porn live streaming and stuff like that for, for quite a, longer than I have. And we actually met at the adult video nomination awards in oh, Vegas. Wow. Yeah. And um, he's got an OnlyFans and he does pretty well. And he does a lot of like cosplay content and a lot of like custom content and stuff. And he does really well on it because he puts a lot of time and effort into his work. That's what seems really cool about OnlyFans too, is it's like, it's like really creative. You can kind of yeah. like put that creative aspect into it. So yeah. And I noticed from your content too, it just seems like you you have that creative mindset going into the content. I, I really love just kind of, I love the chance to be creative and I've always kind of been a sexual person. So like being able to be creative and then be sexual and like make money off of it at the same time is like 
it's really fun. Like I have a lot of fun doing it. And like, I've talked to some girls before and they've been like, Oh, like it's just such a drag. Like, blah, blah, blah. Or like, Oh, it's like, sometimes like, I just don't want to. And I'm like, I literally like look forward to it. I'm like, okay. I'm always like writing down little ideas. I'm like, what if, what if, uh, you know, I like tell my boyfriend, I'm like, what if, what if we transitioned where like you're sitting alone and then you like put glasses on and then like, I'm a cyberpunk stripper. And then like, <laughs> and I'm like constantly thinking That's up awesome. these ideas. Yeah. It's so fun. <laughs> That's so cool. That's also super badass too. So would you say it takes a certain personality to like excel at OnlyFans? I wouldn't say it takes a certain personality because this is one thing that I've, I've, cause so I get a lot of people who ask me, how do you make money? Like, what can I do that's best? And the thing mm -hmm. is every single person who does adult content, their selling point is just themselves and their personality. And I do think that there are certain personality aspects that can help with growing an OnlyFans. Like I love chatting with uh, my OnlyFans subscribers. I'll talk to mm -hmm. them all the time. And like, sometimes it's not it, like a lot of times it's not even sexual. Like I'll hear about like their day or they'll tell me about how a date went or they'll show me like, you know, I have one guy and he builds those like Gundam things where you like put them together and make like a big Gundam. And he like sends me pictures of those all the time when he builds them. I really like interacting with them. I like making them happy. Like one of the biggest things that draws me to adult content is like, it generally gives people a little bit of an escape, you know, mm -hmm. and like it lets them enjoy themselves. It's like a treat, you know, and stuff like that. It's, it's a, it's a luxury that they can yeah. divulge in. And I a really, really like that. Too. Yeah, it's a fantasy, yeah. you know, and I really like that. An issue that I see a lot is this mindset of like, and, and this is totally valid. And I know that girls do make money off of this, but it's the mindset of, you know, you're lucky to talk to me. Mm -hmm. Don't talk to me unless you pay me like you're beneath me kind of thing. But I do feel like maintaining a viewership stems a lot from making them feel like a normal person, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and so yeah. I would say like having a more personable atmosphere and personality can really help with maintaining like the viewership that you have rather than people coming in one month and being like, okay, like th she's hot, but like, she's mean. So I'm leaving. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, that's what all my exes say. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I know you, you said like, you know, you um, tried stripping. It wasn't necessarily the right fit for you. Would you say like only fans is a safer way to to approach sex work as well? There's definitely components that you have to be wary of, but that's just sort of in sex work in general. Because one thing, like I have a lot of people, you know, that ask me like how to get started and everything. And I always tell people right off the bat, I'm like, listen, if you're gonna go into adult work, you have to 100% be okay with the fact that your family, your friends, your coworkers, everyone is most likely going to see your porn. In fact, I can guarantee that they will because yeah. there's no way to hide it. And that's just, you know, someone is going to be, you know, to leak it to them. Someone is gonna leak it in general. Someone's gonna see it. Like there's a lot of dangers that come with it. And like, mm -hmm. sometimes the dangers even come from like other models. Like I got doxxed a while back and that's why I had to leave Oregon because like I had like people like stalking me. But yeah, when I was a stripper, you know, there was like bouncers and stuff and they would make sure like they would walk you out to your car. But like with OnlyFans and stuff, other than what you provide for yourself and like just being conscious of what you're putting out there and everything. Totally. It's like, it's one of those things where even though it's not in person, like there's still people can find out a lot on the internet and you oh, know, yeah. you're kind of running your own business and having to guard yourself at the same time. And yeah, that was interesting. You mentioned other uh, creators. Have there been like kind of that competitive aspect? It's usually mostly very supportive. My, I mean, I found my best friend, my boyfriend all through adult work. There's this amazing supportive community. All of my friends are our other sex workers genuinely it really is like a really really supportive community and everybody's willing to like you know like let's do shout outs like let me give you tips stuff like that like let me you know support you like I get I comment on and I get other comments from models that are like on your Instagram and they're like oh my god you're so hot like I would die for you and like yeah. it's it's really cute it's really nice and like there is a few outliers who like their whole purpose is like I hate men. I want to make money from men and I want to start drama. And for the most part, those people aren't very successful, but, um, the people who are like supportive and uplifting, like those are the best ones. And there's a lot of them in the community, which is really That's cool. Awesome. Um, this is kind of like an, an obvious, uh, question, but would you say that OnlyFans is a legit way to make money? A lot of people are recommending, you know, to join OnlyFans and like, Oh, I made this amount of money. Like, this is awesome. Um, and then some others are like, Oh no, it's, that's not the reality. It is a legit way to make money. I am, 
I'm at right now, I think, so right now I'm 0.48. So I'm in the top 1%. So I make, awesome. you know, good money. Like the, this is, I, this is my full-time job is only fans. Um, but it can be very back and forth. But the thing is, and this is something that I try to stress, a lot of the people that come on to social media and they're like, oh my God, like I made so much money. Like, here you go. Like you should sign up too. The reason they're doing that a lot of the times they probably didn't make that amount of money. Or if they did, they're making it all off of affiliate links. Because if mm. you sign up with affiliate links, you get a percentage of whatever that other model makes. So if you push it to so many girls and so many creators, you'll make decent money off of what they're making. But it's not necessarily, I don't really find that morally, I don't like that. Like I've never pushed my affiliate link on anyone because I don't think that porn is something that you should just do because like you want to make money or anything. Cause it can have a lot of repercussions, mm -hmm. both like on your mental state, you know, if you're not ready for it or, you know, your career or anything like that. And so I get kind of, I get kind of grossed out by people like pushing it, being like, Oh no, you want to be a bad bitch. Like use my affiliate link and make $600,000 in a month. And it's like, yeah. that's not, <laughs> That's, I mean, unless you were like 0.0001%, like you're not making this the same amount of money. And my, um, my friend Kat Jira is a cosplay model who also does live streaming on Chatterbait. And she actually on Twitter once did like a math breakdown where she was like, listen, I'm one of the top performers in OnlyFans. Here's how much I make. Here's where you're getting your money from. Here's a breakdown of like how much they would have to be making at the time. And like, she's like, these numbers don't add up. So I think a yeah. lot of it is very, very inflated. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and, and I think a lot of it is to push that affiliate link so that people can make, can make money off of that. Totally. I mean, it definitely is a very legitimate way to make money. It's not, obviously it's not a hundred percent stable, but that's just like any social media job, mm -hmm. you know, and stuff like that. And it all comes from people wanting to give you money. So you have to be able to find the people who want to give you money. Otherwise it's not going to work. But yeah. I mean, other than that, like I, I, yeah, it's, it's, it works pretty well for me. It's worked really well for, um, my, my friends and my boyfriend and everything. And if you put the time and effort into it and you have the right mindset for it, like you can make a lot of money off of it, which is really cool. Yeah, that was perfect. That answered so many questions. Like, a lot of the promotion that I've been seeing around OnlyFans reminds me a lot of like the get rich quick gurus that are like, mm -hmm. you can make $50,000 a month off of Amazon FBA. I was like, okay, um, is there some sort of motive for them? Like, you know, kind of um, pushing- Oh yeah, there absolutely is. Cause like, I mean, if- a creator goes online, like if you push a girl like a whole bunch to make to make an OnlyFans and she makes like two grand or something, you're going to get like five hundred dollars or whatever. Wow. Yeah. So like, yeah, so like it, it, it definitely is a huge motivation <clears throat> for them to to push that. And I think that's a large part of it. It's like it's almost like a weird like pyramid scheme. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like I always tell people, I'm like, listen, if you want to get into OnlyFans, like get into OnlyFans because you want to, mm -hmm. not because you're like, oh, sick, I want to make a hundred thousand dollars this week. Like that's not how it's gonna happen. And then I have so many people, and they're like, I've been trying so hard. I don't get it. Like I thought you just make it, and then you log on, and then you just make money. And it's like we have to give people a reason to want to see your boobies because they can <laughs> see boobies anywhere. Like you have to make yeah. them want to see your boobies <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's so well it goes back to that whole thing too where it's like um only fans doesn't self-promote or it doesn't you know like mm -hmm. you don't you can't promote within the platform so you can't just join on and then all of a sudden start making money are people on only fans largely respectful or do you have to deal with sometimes people who are like disrespectful and if so like how do you go about that so for the most part a lot of my a lot of my fans on there are very respectful which i super appreciate and I think it's because I approach it with a very like hey like I'm here for your pleasure like I want to make you feel good so like tell me what you like let's be friends let's like you know make this work and stuff like that I have had a couple guys who are like oh they're just like awful for no reason like they'll be like wow I really hated this video you look so <laughs> stupid in it and I'm like excuse <laughs> me like, and the thing is is when I worked in um because I used to work before I did uh adult work I worked in retail and I did um I worked in a cafe and that'll train you for that, anything <laughs> oh yeah and like the thing that I fucking hated the most was that people would talk down to me and I had just had to be like huh, yeah you know and I oh my god it made me so mad and I'm a very I'm a very stubborn person and I'm I'm not 
I'm a very confrontational person. <laughs> um, so when people talk down to me, I'm immediately like, okay, let's fight. And so with OnlyFans, I really like it because even though I super appreciate everyone who puts the time in to like spend like their money on me, which like constantly I'm like, oh my God, like you go to work, you work your job and then you want to come and like, I make you happy. Like that's fucking sick, dude. Uh, like I love that. And, but at the same time, it's my domain is like how I view it. And I'm like, you're, you're gonna respect me. Like, as long as you're respectful to me, I'll be respectful to you. This will be great. We'll have so much fun. So a lot of times when people talk down to me, I'm straight up like, Hey, like I usually give them two chances. The first chance is, Hey, you don't get to talk to me like this. And if you talk to me like this, I'm going to, I'm going to revoke your, your access to me. And you're not going to be able to talk to me because OnlyFans has two options. When you have someone shitty, you can block them, which the downside to that is if you block somebody, it refunds them all the money they ever spent on you. Oh wow! So you lose all that money if you block them or you can restrict them. So they can't message you and they can't comment on any post, but they can still see everything. Mm -hmm. So the second time that they're disrespectful to me, I usually restrict it unless they say something really terrible. Cause I've had some really, really awful people that I've just had to be like, you know what? Take your money back. Like, like, here's your $12. I don't want it. <laughs> and like those people usually, but I mean, that, that happens like maybe once every couple months. Like I've yeah. rarely had people be really disrespectful. With OnlyFans, it's kind of like you have your own shop. It's like your own business, your own, you know, place where it's you the, can kind it's of. It's the, where you can look at somebody and go, I am the manager. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, totally. But one thing I definitely should, I should clarify too, is like, this is also, this is my experience as a white femme passing mm -hmm. OnlyFans creator. And I will say that for like people of color on OnlyFans and, you know, like, you know, men or trans or like, well, I'm non-binary, but for like, you know, mm -hmm. more um, people who are transitioning and stuff like that, like their experience could be way different than mine. So like at the same time, I do want to say like, take everything I say with a grain of salt because this is totally. just like my perspective, you know? Totally. You, you hear a lot of online conversation. I think a lot of people are curious and I think a lot of the bigger publicity on OnlyFans. So like the celebrities that have joined OnlyFans, like that has kind of set the image. But I think it's really interesting to learn from someone who's Oh a, yeah, a real creator well, and everything. Because like and... people like, I mean, people like Tana and um, everything. Like they, their experiences are not worldwide. Oh shoot, what's uh, my her name? Just Bella Thorne, right? Bella Thorne, yeah. yeah. So Bella, so <laughs> oh, she made like... like you know a million in a week or whatever, and it's like that shit does not happen for normal content creators. Like we're on there and we're like fucking, we're grinding all the time, putting out new content all the time, doing all kinds of new things that we can to, you know, make our baseline amount of money. And then like, I think, you know, for the most part, it's like, if I just went on there and I just like once every week, I posted a bikini pic, I would not be making money. <laughs> so I, you know, and I do subscribe to Bella Thorne cause I was curious about like, and you know, I, I talked to her in DMs like a tiny bit. I, I got like one shout out from her, which didn't do anything. It, it's interesting to see like what she posts and knowing that she's making like hundreds of thousands. And then I'm over here and I'm, I'm making decent, but I'm still like, <laughs> everyone's like, oh yeah, it's the, it's the platform you can make millions on. I'm like, well, yeah, if you're like a fucking superstar. Do you think some celebrities or large influencers who see how much money people like Bella Florin and um, Tana Mojo have made, do you think that more will come onto the platform? And if they do, do you think that will actually help other creators on OnlyFans like and kind of grow the platform? Or do you think it'll kind of cut away from other people making money and alter the rules on OnlyFans that might mess with other creators' income in the long run? Well, um, I mean, it already has caused so many problems. And in a a perfect world it would be like yeah everybody can come on OnlyFans make your bag whatever you want to do do what you want to do but the but the the problem is every time someone comes onto the new platform that's big they always do something that fucks it up for the or, sorry screws it up for the rest of us okay. you know I mean it's like you've got like like Tana came on and then she had some controversy and then like Bella came on and then she had the controversy and then Gabby DiMartino whatever the hell she was doing like <laughs> Yeah. After she did that, um, I noticed like I went to type out a message to someone and I said, I did like, you know, the little like uwu face where it's like dot dot and a three. 
And so it's like a little kitty face or whatever. Someone said, how are you? And I said, good. And then that little face and then said you right afterwards. And they wouldn't let me send that message because they took the three and then the Y-O from the other one and thought it was like three year old. So they wouldn't let me send that message. So like there, you, it's so hard to even like write messages now. And oh my God, it's like. Yeah. Uh, That's so <laughs> like frustrating. They just, yeah. They just come on and they, they cause so many issues with the, the money we can earn and like chargebacks. And then they set this like precedent, like, Oh, most of the people who are on there, they're just going to scam you. And it's like, no, some of us like put mm. a lot of time and work into what we do. I have a second only fans. That's like, free that has like free previews of things and that's kind of helped because some people are like i i like i don't blame them they're like i kind of want to see a preview of what you do um and most of the time i'll be like oh you can go to my my corn hub or you can go to my free only fans because like otherwise how are they gonna know i'm not gonna scam yeah. them like all these big influencers do only fans is for everything but for the most part what they're doing and what they're getting into is porn and i don't think a lot of them understand the rules mm -hmm. of porn like porn has rules and yeah. like they just come in and they're like oh yeah it's porn i'm a bad bitch i can do whatever i want and it's like no you can't and you're kind of fucking it up for everyone else like yeah. there are things you can and can't do like what gabby did like she like i totally think that was you know her just doing something for outrage culture but then she lost her whole only fans account and it's like yeah because there's rules like that's like a, like you can like go to prison for that sweetheart yeah. like you can't just do that you know and it's, it's frustrating. not the same game as like as you know youtube or yeah. instagram where you can kind of start a controversy and then you know um, a ton of people start talking about it and then like it kind of gets you a little bit of negative publicity but just like more you know attention it's like only fans is different because it's actually like yeah. an industry with like you know regulations and, and things exactly that. just like any other porn site and it's like i i just don't think that they understand that and they understand that there's there's things you can and can't do and just because it is adult content doesn't mean anything goes. And I feel like a lot of people have that that issue too. Like when I go to conventions and stuff, well, when there was conventions, yeah. <laughs> um, when I would go to conventions and stuff for porn, like people would be like, oh my gosh, so are you like, you know, going out and just like having sex like at the convention? It's like, no, like <laughs> you have to be fully covered. You know, I'm not like walking around the Vegas casino showing my bits. Like there's rules, there's regulations to things and people don't get that which is yeah. kind of frustrating. But like, I understand why they don't get it because it's not something everybody experiences. But I'm like, if you don't understand it, don't do it <laughs> until you get it. What do you see the future of sex work being? Also, what do you hope it becomes? There's actually like, um, so there's a, there's a law trying, they're trying to pass right now that I'm actually really worried about. Um, and that is gonna really affect the future of sex work where it's basically this law that in, in the basis of it, it looks like a really good idea where it's, you know, making sure that uploading to any site, um, if you're uploading any type of pornographic material, you have to be fully verified and it has to be like fully, like whoever is in the, in the video, in the photo, mm -hmm. whatever, has to be fully consenting to everything, you know, to it being uploaded and stuff, which is a great idea. However, the issue with that is that the manpower behind going through every single piece of content that goes up on Twitter, that goes up on Reddit, that is way too much. And for the most part, sites are just going to go Instagram through it and they're going to be like, nope, we're not doing any of that. And I think that's yeah. really going to mess with the ability to advertise and like even now like we're seeing the effects of Pornhub but I did really like what Pornhub did because I have been saying for a while that Pornhub should do what they did which is where they got rid of any video that wasn't uploaded by a verified creator which I thought was super cool I really like that but Pornhub also that's their focus is porn so they're willing to put the time and effort into you know verifying every single creator and stuff but sites like Twitter they don't care about sex workers. I got my Twitter banned for like something little and now I can't ever get it back. Like I was suspended forever and that sucks. You know, they don't, they don't care. And yeah. so like, they're not going to take the time to go through that. But I mean, my hope is that eventually sex work becomes normalized enough that like, you know, I can say that I do sex work and it not be a huge deal like I got in a huge fight with my boyfriend's roommate because he was like telling me like oh that's not a real job like you're so lazy you're just making easy money from manipulating people and it's or like people will mock me like I had like my high school bully from like that I haven't oh. talked to in like six years she like messaged me and she's like I just want you to know that everyone knows what you do back at, back in our hometown like and everyone laughs at you and I'm like 
okay it's like did they like and subscribe yeah. like, I just wish it was more accepted where it would be easier like I could just say it. like I could say it like if I said like oh like I you know work at a coffee shop or whatever like I wish it was easier mm-hmm. to go through with that but for the most part there's so much backlash of people trying to like quiet it and shove it down that I'm not quite sure where it's headed right now. And like FOSTA and SESTA went through and that really messed with a lot of stuff with sex work. I would love to see things like, um, like escorting being decriminalized, which that's a big thing that, you know, sex workers want is like decriminalization over legalization. And like, I would love to see that stuff happen in the future and have it be like, you know, just accept it and be like a, just a part of life. This is like our bodies and we should be allowed to do what we want with our bodies. And, you know, everyone's consenting. Everyone's fine. It's totally OK. And instead, it's just right now, it's just not taken seriously at all. You know, like when I had a stalker and I was like explaining, I'm, I'm pretty anti-police but at the time I had no other option because the person was like emailing my yeah emailing me like what I was wearing that day and stuff and it was freaking me out and I like called the police and they basically what the police said was we can't do anything and also if you didn't want this you shouldn't be doing what you're doing I I want it to be in a world where it's okay to be a sex worker <laughs> you know at I mean, the bare minimum yeah. I mean you <laughs> like, think about yeah you think about the fact that like a sex work has been around for ages it's one of the oldest professions but also on top of that i I just look at industry wise you know like there's so many industries that are highly valued because um like so many internet companies for example like google or or youtube and they're like taken so seriously but you look at the entire sex work industry and it's like pornhub is one of the most visited sites on the internet yet sex workers themselves are disrespected and not taken seriously we we pay taxes like i mean to use any site you have to fill out tax forms and stuff like that like you know you pay a decent amount of our wages over to over to the government and stuff like that i'll get in conversations with someone like online like this is a big issue on twitter like put in my opinion on a video game or on a social issue and it doesn't matter what the issue was people would be like well you're a whore so you're stupid like, you don't know what you're talking about go show your tits and it's like <sighs> And they don't realize too, they're like, why don't you go get a real job? And I'm like, you realize if I went out and got like a regular job, you wouldn't be able to look at my porn anymore, right? (laughs) Like I wouldn't be making that and you like to look at it. So (laughs) (laughs) like if people didn't do creative jobs, you wouldn't have music, you wouldn't have movies, you wouldn't have porn, you wouldn't have all these things that people consume. Like if you look at somebody and you're like, okay, well, you know, Like even down to like, sometimes I try to sell my art. Like that's a separate venture from my porn, but like I'm working on becoming an artist on the side. And like, I've even had people tell me there, they're like, you're trying to be an artist. I'm like, don't you play video games? You know, like artists do that, right? Like you can't shit on everything that's creative and then consume all those things and then be like, oh, but you should get a real job. A big argument that a lot of swerfs, so sex work exclusionary radical feminists, a lot of their argument is like, oh, well, you know, we're gonna take you away from this. And it's like, well, I like this. And they're like, no, you don't, you're a victim. And I'm like, no. And they're like, no, people who do porn, they're sex trafficked. And I'm like, no, those are very different things. And like, they just like, don't like some people can't compute that I genuinely enjoy my job. Like the number one question I get asked by people who like just have general questions. Like when I do Q and A's and stuff, it's like, do you like your job? I was like, dude, I fucking love my job. And like, they don't compute that sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like they don't get it that like I genuinely just really like my job yeah and like I think a lot of the confusion too is like I'll get questions they're like yeah but like what do you think about like all the old men that are like winking off to you and I'm like I don't care because those are people and like if I was only making this content for a specific demographic to look at I wouldn't make this content available for anybody and I would be Mm -hmm. like messaging people be like oh you subscribe to me what do you look like what's your age what do you you know like everything like that like And I, like, I don't care, like, as long as they're above the age of 18, like, and they're, you know, and they're consenting, like, anybody can look at my content. I love it. I love making people happy. That's, like, the best, best fucking part. And, like, people, like, can't get that. Like, they don't get that you can just genuinely enjoy it you are running your own business it it sucks Mm -hmm. that I think a lot of you know sex workers who do what you do aren't treated like they run their own business but that's really what it is and it's centered around the content that you want to make um you know what you feel best doing to me I'm like that's empowering you know you're not you're not doing anything you don't want to do slight trigger warning here I will say that like as someone who's a victim of like sexual 
abuse, being able to be in full control of that. And like, it goes back to the whole thing of like, well, what if people are disrespectful and I can just like silence them? Having this full control over this sexual, fun, creative atmosphere, that's helped me a lot to get over my sexual trauma. Like yeah. I've had done other things obviously outside of it, like therapy and like, you know, working with my boyfriend and stuff, but sex work in itself, it's made me love my body more. It's made me be able to take back my agency more. And I really, really like that. Like, I don't, I don't think I would be as sexually open in a healthy, positive way as I am right now, if it wasn't for sex work. That's amazing. No, I love that story. I mean, I think that so many people, you know, especially women, especially can relate to that experience. For me personally, I can totally relate to that. And this feeling of, um, you know, after going through any sort of sexual trauma, feeling very reluctant to be physically involved with people feeling yeah. like, you know, scared to be vulnerable or like your body is not yours, you know, or like just this weird feeling, um, almost like disassociating when it comes to any sort of like sexual experience. So being able to exactly. like take that back and be like, you know, like this is, you know, I'm going to make this what I want it to be. And I'm going yeah. to do this for myself. Like, I think that's really awesome. Yeah. It's, it's definitely something that I'm, I'm grateful for. But um, yeah, if you have anything else you want to say about OnlyFans and your experience, um, maybe advice for people who are interested in getting involved or anything like that. Um, I definitely would say like the number one thing to remember is it's not easy, quick money. It's really, really not. And that's not just with OnlyFans. Like some people get confused. They're like, well, don't you make, I mean, like, you know, you have a decent following on Pornhub. Like, don't you make hundreds of thousands on that? No, <laughs> you don't make a lot of money on these sites. Like, the, you know, unless you're like number one, mm -hmm. like you're not making tons and tons of money. It's not quick money. It's not easy money. There's a lot of things that you have to do. It's not a hundred percent anonymous. You know, you can't be like, oh, well, I just want to show my face. Like someone's going to see it. Someone's yeah. going to know. And it's, it, you have to be careful. You have to be safe and you have to consider like, how is this going to affect your future? And is this something that you want to follow you forever? Cause it will. But then if you are okay with all those things, like the biggest thing is a hundred percent to just be yourself. Like don't try to like make yourself be someone else because then you're not going to be happy with it. Like I know a lot of girls try to be like Belle Delphine and it's like, then all their comments are, you're just a second rate Belle Delphine, you know? And it's like, you, you, you gotta be yourself. You gotta do what you enjoy. And that's, what's going to make you happiest mm -hmm. with that content is doing what you enjoy, what you like to do, what you find attractive. Like for instance, like, and if this is too graphic, you don't have to add it in. Like I won't do anal and I don't do scenes with anybody other than my boyfriend because one, I don't like sleeping with people who aren't my boyfriend and I don't like, you know, and yeah. so like, I, you know, I'll just tell people that straight up and you know, they have to respect that. And like, if I was going out and I was like making myself do scenes, like, you know, with my friends or with other guys or whatever, I wouldn't be enjoying myself. Or, or like, if I was making myself do anal, I wouldn't be enjoying myself. So like, you know, it's all about just doing what you enjoy and doing what you love. And then when it comes to OnlyFans too, like one piece of advice I'll give out is unless you're a FinDom, which is like a financial dominatrix, which is really hard to actually do correctly. Don't treat these people like they're just there to give you money and fuck off. Like these are actual people who are giving themselves in a vulnerable, putting themselves in a vulnerable position by being like, Hey, I'm attracted to you. I like your content and I want to pursue it. And like, you know, this is what I like and stuff like that. Like treat the people who subscribe to you as people, because that's what they are. And I don't think people realize that when you treat someone negatively in a sexual atmosphere like that, you can actually really fuck up their ability to be comfortable with their sexuality in the future yeah. and with sharing their sexuality with people. And I'm not saying like, if someone starts sexting you or like sending you pictures, you have to be like, oh yeah, like you can politely say like, hey, you have to pay me extra for that. But like, don't, don't treat people like idiots. Like, I mean, unless that's their thing, you know, <laughs> don't treat people like idiots. King just shamer. for talking to you. Yeah. Don't yeah. King shame. Don't, don't humiliate them. You know, yeah. these are individual people and they are choosing to spend their money, which not a lot of people have right now yeah. on you as a treat for themselves or because they genuinely like you and want to support you. And I think a lot of people need to keep that in mind. Like it genuinely breaks my heart when people tell me like how mean other content creators have been with them and how they don't even really like paying for porn anymore. Not because they don't support the sex industry because they're scared. They're going to spend their money on someone who treats them like an animal and like, mm -hmm. 
that makes me sad. And so I wish there was more of that mindset of like treating these people as people and not just numbers and money. Those were perfect answers. And I really appreciate you talking with me. That was like really informative too. I'm just like, wow. Yeah. Perfect conversation. Cool. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what I want. That, that's what I wanted to do. Like I was, I was really excited for this. Cause I'm like, not many people ask like the actual creators. Like it's always like, let's talk about Bella Thorne. And I'm like, okay, but what about like everybody yeah. else? Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Exactly. No, I really appreciate that. This whole thing this is really cool. Thank you. You are such a beautiful spirit, like super Aww, intelligent thank and, you. <laughs> and super fun to talk to. So thank you so much. Thank you so much to Lana for chatting with me. She was so awesome and so informative and has such a great and balanced outlook on OnlyFans, which is amazing. Don't forget to check out all of Lana's socials. I'll also link them below in this video in the description. And that's all for this video on OnlyFans and the good, the bad, and the ugly. But I'd also love to know your thoughts on OnlyFans and your takeaway from this video. I personally don't think I'll be getting an OnlyFans anytime soon. It looks Looks like a lot of work and I respect a lot of creators on that platform. But if you want to support my work and what I'm doing here, please check out my Patreon. We now have three different tiers on the Patreon, one of which is the $2 tier so that there is options for everyone. But any support that you choose to show, I greatly appreciate. My merch is also below this video and I'll see you in the next one.